We're here at Mobile World Congress 2019 in Barcelona, and I'm joined by Anders Rosengren. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's great to be here. Thank yeah, you very much. Thanks for taking time to join me on camera. Now, you're the head of architecture and technology at Ericsson Digital Services. It's an exciting role. Um, what can you tell us about what's on the pavilion this year from your uh, team with uh, Ericsson Digital Services? So I think what we have here behind us and what we have as proof points for digital services is our full platform, our full portfolio, starting with the cloud infrastructure, the cloud platform, going all the way up to BSS, the business support systems. Now for folk who aren't overly familiar with that full suite, maybe could you just quickly give us a rundown on what the whole portfolio from Ericsson Digital Services includes? Yeah, so you could say that this year is all about 5G. Right. And to, to really launch, to really put 5G into your network, you cannot only do the 5G core functionality. You need to start with the cloud infrastructure. So you need to have the cloud infrastructure in place to support your central cloud, where you deploy your network functions, your yep. OSS, your BSS. But you also need to look at the edge, because some of the promises with 5G comes from low latency or, or high reliability, etc. Right. And to be able to do that, you need a cloud infrastructure to stretch into the edge. You also need a cloud infrastructure to support cloud native applications, or 5G core is full cloud native from the beginning. Yep. So you need to evolve your, your infrastructure to support going from supporting VMs only to also support containers. Right. So that is also there in our, our, our portfolio. So if we take the step upwards from the cloud infrastructure, we are looking at the network functions. So there, of course, we have our dual mode cloud core, that is, we are launching this year, that yeah. really supporting the evolution from 4G to 5G in one single entity, okay. one single solution. We also have our cloud communication uh, suite, which is supporting voice over LTE across our networks, for, of course, as well as other communication services, both for consumers and enterprises. So those are our sort of key network functions that are together with the RAN products yep. that are building together the complete uh, communication functionality, the complete core functionality. Okay. On top of that, then, we have our OSS systems, our operational support system, which is bringing together network management, orchestration, service orchestration, both workload orchestration, resource mm -hmm. orchestration on a lower level, as well as end-to-end -end service orchestration. Right. And uh, on top of that, in order to really to monetize your services, so you're building it up, cloud infrastructure, yep. network functions, OSS, but then in the end you want to make money. So on top of that, you have your business support systems with charging, with billing, uh, with uh, um, sorry, yeah. something. Account creation, the whole thing. I mean, you, the thing that strikes me from what you're saying is that uh, Ericsson now has this full suite from essentially uh, creating products and services and the types of service delivery, all the way through to the activation, instantiation. And the last time I looked at it, it was almost capable of doing self-service, whereas a consumer, I could sign up online, whether it's at a carrier and operator, you could build that capability for the carrier and operator, allow me to self-service and sign up for a new service on my mobile phone or some other thing if I was uh, uh, you know, running robots in a, in a, in a in, um, you know, manufacturing plant or whatever. You can run that whole thing from end to end with the orchestration to the business support services in one full suite. Now that to me seems exciting and new. Uh, this, is, this is probably groundbreaking in a telco space because they haven't really had that capability before, have they? Now I think we are building together all the different pieces that you need yep. as an operator to create your, to create your business. And I think we're also, what we hear from our operator customers is of course that they really, you touched on that, we really need to lower the threshold and make it both omnichannel, of yep. course, both towards consumers as well as enterprises, and really leave, get the power out to the consumers or the enterprises yep. to have this self-service portal that are reaching into the network, enable through, for example, network slices, uh, instantiating a network slice yep. for your specific use case, your, what you want to do with your enterprise, and then the operator can automatically instantiate an end-to-end -end network slice across the RAN, across the transport, across the core network, and they're able to then provide you with a bill and, and uh, those yep. things. So, for, I mean, we hear a lot about network slicing. Mm -hmm. um, I would love you to maybe just give us a quick two-minute summary of kind of what Ericsson Digital Services is doing with network slicing. Uh, maybe just first, what is network slicing for folk who may not be as familiar as they should be? And then where does it fit into that space and, and what, what, what is the key differentiation that network slicing brings about? So I think when we look at 5G and the use cases, we definitely see that we need we need one infrastructure in place. We need the cloud infrastructure, the transport, the RAN, the core network, yep. but we need to support very many different use cases. Yep. And then you can do that either by having a specific 
instant specific networks for yeah. every use case. And that is not, it's not viable from right, a financial right. perspective or operations, both CapEx and OPEX perspective. So instead, what we do is we add a network slice across so it makes us, enables us to uh, take the functionality of the, of the platform and build specific uh, customized network slices yep. for each use case using the same infrastructure. So, so it's a bit like network virtualization in many ways, is that right? I mean, we hear about yes. virtualization with compute and storage. My general view is that like, you, you can have multiple different service types and service levels and pricing points all on that one common infrastructure on demand, either as a permanent end-to-end -end connection or as the service is required. Is that a fair thing to say? Yes, I think you're, you're touching okay. exactly there. Thank you. So you've got an exciting event here and there's a lot for people to see. So for folk who are here at Mobile World Congress, we would love to see them come on the stand. For people who are not here, uh, follow on Twitter and LinkedIn and some of the digital platforms. And I think you've got some live streaming happening this week as well. Yes, I think most of the events are are carried through on your on our live uh, social media. So you Fantastic. should definitely try, come and follow us there if you're not here in Barcelona. Fantastic. Well, Anders, thank you so much for making time to catch up with me on camera. It's been great to get your insights on what's happening. Very exciting to be here this week in Barcelona at Bible World Congress 2019. I think it's going to be yet another amazing event for Ericsson and uh, I can't wait to experience it myself. Thank you very much. Really nice. Thanks for your time. Thank you.